Amidst the current coronavirus pandemic, our lives have been filled with technology. For me, that means having to attend school virtually with my computer usage growing significantly. But this increasing sense of technology also has its upsides. Think about Siri for a second. Have you ever wondered how that communication even works? How can Cortana recognize our voices? What really happens behind the scenes? That would be natural language processing. Stick around and stay tuned to this episode to learn more about this fascinating tool. Let's get started. Hello, my name is Rohak and I'm the founder of Empower Code, helping you make a change with technology. Today marks the seventh episode of my course, Data Science for Media Bias Detection, where we will explore the fascinating scope of natural language processing. This will be the perfect beginner's guide to NLP and showcase the five major concepts that you need to know in order to get started. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's start learning. Natural language processing, also known as NLP, is a subfield of computer science and artificial intelligence concerned with interactions between computers and the human language. In a nutshell, NLP applies machine learning algorithms to human text and speech. But what even are some examples of this fascinating mechanism? Well, systems like speech recognition and Google Translate are all made possible with this human computer interaction tool. Additionally, NLP can do a whole lot, from summarizing long documents in a couple short sentences to auto-completing emails and text messages. Now that we have a general overview, let's dive in one level deeper and discuss some major NLP concepts that you should know of. The first major concept is called sentence tokenization. Now before we begin, I want you to think of a long, jumbled mess of words. How would you make sense of that? By tokenizing or segmenting the passage into individual sentences that can be understood and easily read. By breaking up complex, messy wording into its sentence components, sentence tokenization can help us out immensely when we try to write quick summaries and scrape long documents of text. The second major NLP concept is known as word tokenization. Now this is where things get really interesting. By dividing up text into individual words, a variety of possibilities open up, including the ability to gauge the frequency of certain parts of speech and the power to perform sentiment analysis, which is a concept and functionality that we will be exploring later on in this course. Tokenization in general allows us to look at text on a deeper and more meaningful level, but can also help detect emotion, feeling, and subjectivity within media articles and science journals. Moving on from tokenization, let's explore the concepts of text lemmatization and stemming. Let me make this short and super simple for you to understand. For grammatical reasons, documents can contain different forms of a word. Take the word drive, for instance. A document could contain words like driving and drives. Now, if you were to take into account all the possible variations and forms of the word drive, that would be way too time consuming and inefficient. Instead, stemming and lemmatization allow us to reduce inflectional forms, which are different ways of saying things and narrow down many forms of a word to their base form. Now let's discuss the differences between stemming and limitization, as well as how they approach this tall task of simplifying varieties of a word. Now stemming is rather crude in that it chops off the ends of words in hopes of reaching a common origin. For instance, if you had three words, dog, dogs, and dogs with an apostrophe, stemming would remove all the excess wording and come upon the origin of dog. However, lemmatization does things a little differently. It views these variations in wording from a vocabulary perspective. Normally, lemmatization aims to remove inflectional endings and rather return the dictionary base form of the word, which is known as the lemma. For instance, take these three words, am, are, and is. Now, instead of chopping off the endings, 
lemmatization finds the vocabulary and morphological common origins of the words and narrows it all down to the word B. The bottom line is this, stemming operates without any knowledge of the context behind wording, while lemmatization actually uses this context to determine the dictionary origins of a given word. Let's move on to our next concept, stop words. Think of stop words like the candy wrapper and the relevant text as the candy. Stop words are words which are filtered out before the processing of text, which usually refer to the most common words like and, the, and a. Uh. Now there are a ton more stop words than these, but the main point is that these words are removed because they add a lot of unnecessary noise and chaos when we're trying to process text. Finally, let's move on to our final concept of the day, POS tagging, also known as part of speech tagging. This functionality is super simple. Remember the word tokenization concept I referred to earlier? Well, for each word in the tokenized group of words, POS tagging can be performed, which assigns a particular label to each token or word to indicate it's part of speech. Now, how is this tool used? Well, tagging is often utilized for pattern detection and text analysis. For instance, if an unknown word is preceded by a determiner, which is a word placed in front of a noun to specify quantity and followed by a noun, the word can be tagged as an adjective. For instance, let's say we have a determiner one that describes quantity and a noun dog. If there is an unknown word between these two words, we know that it has to be an adjective. So we could say something along these lines, one brown dog or one happy dog. This is natural language processing in action. Now we have taken our first deep dive into the fascinating world of natural language processing. I hope you enjoyed this quick beginner's guide episode of my course, Data Science for Media Bias Detection. In the coming episodes, I will be showing you real life applications of natural language processing in Python. More specifically, however, we will use sentiment analysis to detect news bias in the media. Stay tuned and get ready. I can't wait to see all of you in the coming videos. Once again, thank you so much for watching this episode. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you in the next episode.